Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Precharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschacha Deshatarine Vancha Kaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patita Nam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare So we're continuing uh, with our study of the nectar of instruction for Bhakti Shastri. This is lesson number number five, right? Yes, Mahas. Okay. So I'll go into the screen sharing. Everyone able to see the slide? Yes, Madam. Ah, good. I'm not sure I can see it. <laughs> Slideshow. Okay. Okay. So? Accelerating spiritual advancement. We'll be looking at text number five as well as seven. Before we do that, just to revise what we talked about. Previous text, three categories of devotees. Remember? Who remembers the three categories? Yes. Okay, can you tell me something about three characteristics? Can you know do you know any characteristics of an Uttama Adhikari? The God. He, he worships the God only. But he cannot discriminate. No, Uttama, Uttama Adhikari. Uttama is strong in page. Convenience and strong and uh, he can debate the opposition. Okay, yeah. Anybody else know some more characteristics? Uttamadi Kari? He knows the uh, science of the God, um, Supreme Person of the God, Krishna. He, he what? He knows the science of Krishna, uh, who is the uh, Supreme Person of the God, Godhead. Yes, he knows the science. And he's also thinking about how to expand the Krishna conscious movement. That's Uttama Adhikari. He's always thinking how to expand the Krishna consciousness movement. And another point is he, he's uh, very strict in chanting the holy name and following the regulated principles. Right? These kind of things. What about the Madhya Madhikari? What are the four uh, activities of the Madhya devotee? A strong, a strong in faith, it's a convenience and good knowledge, but cannot always defeat the opposition. No but, but there's, no, but there's four characteristics. You're just talking about his faith and knowledge, but there's particular characteristics of the Madhya Madhya How he relates to different people. 
मज्ज मज्ज भाग्यवतम कृष्णा and uh, he gives mercy uh, to the uh, that is over and uh, he is associating with the devotees only yeah in, in what way he is friendly with them right friendship friendly, yes friendly friend yes friendly with the devotees right and one more and the last one is krishna maharaj yes He neglects the he neglects the persons who are envious. No, we had that. We had that one. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. He worships uh, supreme personality of God as uh, Godhead as the highest object of love. Yes, right. Thank you. He worships the Lord as the highest object of love. Very good. Okay. And the Kanista devotee, some characteristic. How how should we relate? To, how does a Madhyam devotee relate to a Kanista devotee? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. Shubhamay Mata Ji, you can tell. Okay. Thank you, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, that uh, they should they respect them and have mercy on them. Amatmati Kari. Well, Rupa Goswami says he will respect them in the mind. Somebody who is kanista, somebody who is chanting the holy name. He's chanting the holy name. How does? What's the question? Uh, How should one see? How should one see? How should one deal with the devotee, Kanista Adhikari, who chants the holy name? How should we deal with the Kanista Adhikari who chants the holy name? We should respect them in, in the mind, right? Okay. All right. We'll go ahead. They, we spoke about ways to associate appropriately with the three categories of devotees. Right? We covered that and discussed the imp importance within ISKCON maintaining appropriate attitude towards devotees' external features. Right? We spoke about how somebody may have a diseased or an infirm body or a body of a low. Low birth, or he may have uh, uh, some handicaps in external appearance. Maybe he's very ugly, or something like that. Body's all deformed, and so. But that's not important. We shouldn't be concerned about the devotee's external features. We want to see the internal consciousness. Within in Iskcon, we don't have, we should not have discrimination between the color of the body or the birth or the country you're from or like that, or or who your guru is or anything. We simply see everybody devotee, right? So important. This then appropriate way of seeing and relating to an empowered Vaishnava. We want to offer ourselves as their servant. We want to hear from them. We want to inquire from them, like that. Okay, we didn't do that self-assessment. Okay, we're going ahead now. Someone like to read? Marriages. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. Uh, 
So the Kanista, he will gradually advance and when he starts see, seeing the different activities of the devotee, so he will seriously come, he will think about how to advance and material conceptions will go away because he's a devotee. So, so what does it mean to advance? Anybody? What does it mean? Somebody's advancing. How would you see, how would you recognize somebody who is, that somebody's advancing? That they will chant regularly. Yeah. And they will attend all the uh, Bhagavatam and classes, scriptures. They will show interest in learning the scriptures. Okay. And uh, show interest to learn more about Krishna, science of Krishna. Mm. They will associate more with the devotees. Okay. We said, here's a verse. Rati prema taratamye bhakta taratama. A devotee is considered superlative or superior according to his attachment and love. Now previously we were speaking about faith and knowledge. Now we're speaking about something else. We're speaking about his attachment and love. That, and that means to Krishna and Krishna's and the process of bhakti and everything in relation to Krishna consciousness, of course. But attachment and love. So someone, you should understand, someone may have faith and knowledge. They may not have that attachment and love. They may not be so advanced in their attachment and love. It's what's going to be discussed. Okay, so first of all, we have the process of diksha. Someone can read this? Srinathram Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Effectively advancing, developing attachments and love, process of diksha. The process by which a devotee becomes attached to Krishna is described in Antyalila 4.192. Diksha kale bhakta kare atma samarpan sei kale krishna tare kare atma sam at the time of initiation when a devotee fully surrenders to the lord's service krishna accepts him to be as good as himself nectar of instruction text 6 uh, purport page uh, 50 text 5 purport yeah. So at the time of initiation, we should understand initiation. We're not just talking about the ritual. At the time you do the fire yagya. <laughs> you know, it's not just only at the time when you do the ritual that it all happens, that we fully surrender. But the process of initiation, which takes some time, we understand. Prabhu, go ahead, read. Divyam gnanam yato dadya kuriyat papasya sankasyam tasmad dekshati sa prakrata desi kasi tattva kovida. By diksha, one gradually becomes disinterested in material enjoyment and gradually becomes interested in spiritual life. Srila Jiva Goswami, Bhakti Sandarbha, 868, Nectar of Instruction, text 5, purport, page 51. Alright, so please note, 
Jiva Goswami, the put here by Diksha, gradually we become disinterested. It's not immediate, that immediately that you do the yagya, okay, <laughs> now no more material enjoyment, no, but gradually we lose interest in material enjoyment and gradually we become more serious about spiritual life. It's a process, it takes some time. Giri Raiswami explains. Someone else like to read, Prabhu? Hare Krishna, Randat Pranam Maharaj. Hare Krishna. <clears throat> Effectively advancing, developing attachment process of Diksha. Diksha is a continuous process whereby a devotee becomes increasingly disinterested in material life and more and more interested in spiritual life. Before bhava, surrender is disturbed by anarthas and aparadas. Attainment of bhava is a big step in diksha or advancement. Right. Yeah, bhava is a big step. And so this is dik diksha, from diksha to give, come to bhava. Bhava meaning ecstasy, right? Go ahead, Prabhu. Yes, Maharaj. Diksha is complete when one comes to bhava. At this point, Krishna accepts the devotee on the same level as himself. And the devotee becomes eligible to serve Krishna with his transcendental senses. Girid Rajaswami, VAHG, Nectar of Instruction Course. Yes, right. So diksha is complete when we come to bhava. That's when the diksha is complete. So you know, to come to bhava, that's a big, it's, it's quite difficult. It's not so easy to get to that bhava. We have to get rid of all the, what we spoke about, anarthas and aparads. Then we can come to bhava. So that's important. Right? Someone else like to read? Hare Krishna Maharaj Dandot Pranam. Hare Krishna. Ayasa Tatra Pravesha Dhavare Tvaye Pre Harigra Virama Shete Tarayama Pradha Nama Eva Tamam Guru Prasad Pada Sarya Dikam. Those twenty twenty Angad serve as the door for the entering Bhakti. The first three Angad taking shelter of the feet of Guru, receiving receiving teaching after initiation and serving the Guru with respect are said to be the principal ones. Bhakti Rasamrut Sindhu 1.2.83 uh, First, so you've studied Nectar of Devotion. In the Nectar of Devotion you will remember there was uh, 64 items of devotional service listed. 64 and the first 20 are very important and the first the first 20 there's 10 items of things we, you're supposed to do and then there's 10 items of things which you're not supposed to do among from these 20 so the 20 angas right they're the door for entering bhakti the main so then the first three are mentioned here taking shelter of the guru taking initiation and teachings, serving. They're the principal ones. In they're all in relation to the Guru. So taking Guru, very important. Maharaji can read. Krishna Maharaj, process of Diksha. One must accept the pure devotee, the representative of God, as one's Guru, and then offer him all the respects one would Offer the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This is the secret of success. 
For one who adopts this method, the perfect process is revealed. Hare Krishna. Keep reading. By offering service and surrendering to the spiritual master, one is elevated to the devotional service. By performing devotional service, one gradually becomes attached to the Supreme Personality of God. Because of this attachment to the Lord, one can understand the law. Srimad Bhagavatam 7.7.29 per Okay. So we're hearing about becoming attached to the Guru. Very important. Yeah. One Some... should not become a spiritual master unless he has attained the platform of Uttama Adhikari. A neophyte Vaishnava or a Vaishnava, Vaishnava situated on the intermediate platform can also accept disciples, but such disciples must be on the same platform and it should be understood that they cannot advance very well toward the ultimate goal of life under his insufficient guidance. Therefore, a disciple should be careful to accept an Uttama Adhikari as a spiritual master. Nectar of the Instruction, Text 5, Purport, page 58. All right, it's a question at the bottom. How do we apply this within ISKCON? How do we apply that the disciple should be careful to accept an Uttama Adhikari as a spiritual master? Anybody like to explain how we apply this within ISKCON? Because we want to take an initiation, our Guru should be Uttama Adhikari. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes, Prabhu. The Guru should have come from the disciplic succession. Yes. And he is situated in Brahman and he must have heard about Vedas from his Guru. Yes. Then uh, we can uh, definitely uh, take the shelter at his lotus feet as a, a Sishya. Okay. Good. Hare Krishna. Uh, anybody else like to say something? What about this Uttama? Now somebody could have done all that, but they may not be Uttama Adhikari. You see, they may have done all that. They may have taken initiation, their disciplic succession, they studied from the Guru, and them, but they still may not be Uttama Adhikari. Guru Krishna Maharaj, Guru must have known the science of Krishna. What? And he should have the knowledge of science of Krishna. He should have the knowledge of the science of Krishna, yes. One thing... And he should... Yeah, go ahead. And he should have uh, control over all his senses. Uh -huh. You see, one person may say, Oh, my guru, he is Uttama Adhikari. And somebody else may say, well, I don't think he's Uttama Adhikari. Is there anything wrong in that? You know, someone may, you may have full faith that your guru is Uttama Adhikari, but somebody may not have faith in your guru as Uttama Adhikari. Is that an offense? Yes, uh, Margo. Huh? No, it's not. Everybody has everybody has their own opinion. Everybody has their own opinion about who who are the Uttama Adhikaris and who are the spiritual masters. It's up to you we say in Iskon everybody can decide for themselves when to take initiation and who to take initiation from. Right? There's a you know, there's a choice. It, because everybody's different. People have different tastes and, you know, they, they, they're looking for different kind of gurus. So within ISKCON, you know, there are many people, that, of course all over the world, you know, and you, yeah, we have to have a lot of spiritual masters. So some people, some gurus are certainly much more advanced than others. But, you know, Everybody has their own choice. People have their own choice. How do we apply it within ISKCON? Within ISKCON, we want everybody to be attached to Prabhupada. 
because if we say Prabhupada, understand Prabhupada, everybody will say, well, Prabhupada's Uttamadikari, everybody will agree to that. But not everybody will have the same opinion about, you know, different people today who are here. You know, it, it's, it's, it's a delicate subject and we don't want to make any offences. So the way we do it in ISKCON, we encourage everyone to become attached to Prabhupada. When they first come to the movement, a new devotee, right, they're coming to the movement, the first thing they should do, they should learn about Prabhupada. And the first thing, they, they say Prabhupada's Pranam Mantra. And then later on, they get their own Diksha Guru. So, Uttama Adhikaris, it's, 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 you know, we don't, we don't say everybody's an Uttama Adhikari because it's up to every individual for themselves to, uh, to consider who they think should be their spiritual master. That's how it is in ISKCON. So the best thing is to get everybody to connect, connected to Prabhupada. And the guru who gives the initiation, he connects us to Prabhupada. The one who gives the initiation, he's the one who, he w because we have faith in him, so he will, con and he's a follower of Prabhupada, so he can connect us to Prabhupada. Right? We'll see more about this as we go on. Someone please read. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yeah. In the last lesson, we discussed the eligibility or qualification for pure devotion, Adhikara, and then the levels of advancement among his devotees. Both classifications are divided into three, and these three divisions are named Kanishta, Madhyama, and Uttama. Okay, and a bit more. Although technically these two classifications speak about different things, Srila Prabhupada, with the exception of the following purport, equates the two in his teachings. Shivaram Swami in Sutta Bhakti, Chintamani, page So he's speaking here about two different things. One is about pure devotion, and then it's about levels of advancement among devotees. So different things. Right? We're going to see. Someone can read this? Yes. A devotee is considered superior or superior according to his attachment and love. Perfect. Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur has stated that if one has developed faith in Krishna consciousness, he is to be an eligible candidate for further advancement in Krishna consciousness. Those who have faith are divided into three categories, Uttama, Madhyama and Kanishta. The standard of devotion is also categorized in the same way. A neophyte believes that only love of Krishna or Krishna consciousness is very good, but he may not know the basis of pure Krishna consciousness or how one can become a perfect devotee. Sometimes in the heart of a neophyte, there is attraction for karma, jnana or yoga. When he is free and transcendental to mix the devotional activities, he becomes a second class devotee. The devotees are described as positive, comparative, and superlative in terms of their love and attachment for Krishna. Chaitanya Charitamrit Madhya Leela 22.71. Okay, so now we're hearing about in terms of their, their love and attachment for Krishna. And you see three levels again, positive, comparative and superlative in terms of their love for Krishna. Now, how do we know who's got this love for Krishna? It's going to be a very individual thing. You know, we can't measure everyone's love for Krishna. 
it's up to everyone for themselves to consider who they think has got love of Krishna. Do you agree? Do you see yes, my point? Yeah, you yes. see my point? Yeah. Okay, so Bhaktivinoda Thakur says, Someone can read, Maharaji? Bhaktivinoda Thakura, however, in Bhakti Tattva, Viveka specifies Uttama Abhikari as the requirement for Madhyama Bhaktas to attain the stages of taste and attachment as summarized in the following table. Right. <laughs> so, it becomes a bit confusing here, you know. We talk about, we talk about Madhyama Bhaktas and Uttama Adhikari, <laughs> right? The so, Uttama Adhikari, that's in terms of faith and knowledge. But the Madhyama Bhakta, that's in terms of taste and attachment, different taste and attachment, love, like that. <laughs> okay, so here's the table. I, it becomes, you can see on the left the different stages, right? Faith or Shraddha and association, Sadhu Sangha, then unsteady devotion, Bhajana Kriya, purifying bad habits, Sanatana Nivriti, steady devotion, Nista, taste, Ruchi, attachment, Asakti, ecstasy, Bhava and love, Prema. So as you go down, we come up in devotional service and the qualification, you can see qualification in the beginning, yeah, up to, up to Anartha Navriti, it's all Kanista. If we're still doing the Anartha Navriti, then we're, we're Kanista. But when you come to the stage of, root, of Nishta, Ruchi, or Nista and Ruchi, Nista is Madhyam, and then taste ruchi, that's uttama. But advancement is madhyam. Okay, anyway, I sent you the over, the, I sent you the uh, outline of all these lessons. So you have this to look over. You can see, you'll see it. Important point, we want, just want to understand, you know, how we do it in ISKCON why we have this program, you know, that everybody should, you know, focus, become attached to Prabhupada. And because you want to have the most advanced guru, right? So, most advanced guru, definitely Prabhupada's the most, everybody agrees. But Prabhupada can't give initiation. Anyway, someone please read. Prabhu? Uh, have a Prabhu read. To achieve loving devotion, one certainly must have the highest qualification by faith and knowledge, Uttamadikari. But one who has attained this highest qualification has not necessarily attained the highest stage of love and attachment for Krishna, Mahabhagavat. Thus, Uttamadikari may still be a conditioned soul at the stage of taste or attachment. Hare Krishna. Oh, just wait, Prabhu. I'm just... Did everyone understand this point here? No. An Uttama Adhikari may still be a conditioned soul at the stage of taste or attachment. He may have very strong faith and knowledge of the scripture, but he hasn't developed his taste or attachment for Krishna. This is the point. This is what we want to understand. Go ahead, Prabhu. In other words, an, an Uttama Adhikari is not automatically an Uttama Bhakta. He may simply be an advanced Madhyama Bhakta. Mm -hmm. A person must have excellent business sense Brilliant. to become a millionaire. Yeah. But just because a person has an excellent yeah, like business sense does not necessarily make him a millionaire. Go ahead. An Uttama Adhikari may be either a conditioned soul at the stage of taste or attachment or a fully liberated soul at the stage of ecstasy in love. 
In either case, Uttama Adhikaris are ideally suited to be spiritual masters because they have the highest qualification in terms of faith and knowledge and thus they cannot be deviated by the argument of non-devotees nor bearing exceptional circumstances do they fall down. Ah, this is very good argument, you see. People may say, oh, you're not qualified to be a guru, you haven't got love for Krishna, you haven't got you haven't developed the taste or attachment, but they have the highest qualification in terms of faith and knowledge, and that's very good. That means they're not going to fall down, they cannot be deviated. They're very strong in their Krishna consciousness. Yeah, go ahead. Uttamadhikari Vaishnavas can be recognized by their ability to convert many fallen souls to Krishna consciousness. The primary duty of a spiritual master. Shivaram Swami, Shuddha Bhakti, Chintamani, page 207, 212. Thank you, Prabhu. Thank so, you. The, the important qualification, the Uttama Adhikari, he can convert. This is another characteristic of Uttama Adhikaris, right? I was saying about the spread the Krishna, always thinking how to expand the Krishna conscious movement. And how do they do it? They, they, by their ability to convert fallen souls to Krishna consciousness, the primary duty of a spiritual master to convert people. We see like Narada Muni bringing people to Krishna consciousness and Srila Prabhupada, how many people Prabhupada brought to Krishna consciousness. So, very important points. All right, let's have some other Prabhu read. Hare Krishna Maharaj, yes. a devotee must understand that the Adi, Adi Guru, original spiritual master of the Sampradaya, is the Shiksha Guru, and only his teachings are to be accepted and not those of any other scholar or teacher. And only a saintly devotee who has understood the teachings of the Shiksha Guru is eligible to be a Shiksha Guru for others. Hari Nama Chintamani. Right. So qualification to, to give initiation, to be a Diksha Guru, you have to have understood the teachings of the Shiksha Guru. And our Shiksha Guru for ISKCON is? Who? Srila Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada. Right. So we read, have to read Prabhupada's books. We have to know Prabhupada's books. And if you know Prabhupada's teachings, then you can be a Diksha Guru for others. So. Prabhu can read more. Yeah. That the following statement be accepted as Iskwan's statement about the founder Acharya. To fulfill the previous Acharya desire for a united world, wide preaching organization to expand Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mission, Sri Prabhupada founded Iskwan as a distinct branch of the Brahma, Brahma Gaudiya Madhva Sampradaya. Therefore, he is the founder Acharya of ISKCON. Yes. Srila Prabhupada is the foundational Shiksha Guru for all ISKCON devotees because he has realized and presented the teachings of the previous Acharyas of the Brahma Gaudiya Madhva Sampradaya appropriately for the modern age. B. Srila Prabhupada's instructions are the essential teachings of ISKCON. For every ISKCON devotee. For every ISKCON devotee. Right. So, many. this is from the GBC about the position of Srila Prabhupada. We want everybody to understand clearly this importance of Srila Prabhupada. Keep reading, Prabhu. See, Srila Prabhupada's books are the embodiment of his teachings and should be accepted as the standard by all future generations of ISKCON. Right. We use Prabhupada's books, right? We don't use anybody else's books when we have classes like that. We follow Prabhupada's books. D. Srila Prabhupada should be worshipped daily by every ISKCON member. Yeah, we do Prabhupada Guru Puja. 
every day in the temples. Okay. Every Iskwan spiritual master is responsible to guide his disciples to follow Siddhila Prabhupada's instructions. Right. Our guideline, our, what our authority is Prabhupada, what Prabhupada said. So, of course, we have to support that with evidence. Right? There's a lot of people who say, Prabhupada said, Prabhupada said. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I never heard Prabhupada say this, so where is it? <laughs> so, have to, it has to be supported, we have to be careful. Yes, go ahead. As Pondar Acharya, Srila Prabhupada gave directions for management, principles of cooperation, and other practical guidance, guidelines which form the basis and inspiration for response policies. Okay. Yeah, Prabhupada gave, didn't give a lot of instructions, right? So many things. Srila Prabhupada established the governing body commissions commission to execute his will following the order of the previous Acharyas. Okay. Yes. Prabhupada did all of these things. And then? One should not accept a spiritual master without following his instructions. Letter of instruction, text by Parpad, page 52. Yeah. So we have to know the instructions of the spiritual master. We have to know what his instructions are. If we don't know what is, how will be, how will we know? Don't just be a blind follower. We have to know what the instructions are. That's why we have these courses, Bhakti Shastri and everything. But we want devotees to read the books. We want people to understand what is Prabhupada's instructions, what are his teachings. Very important for us. And that way we'll develop our own faith and knowledge. And hopefully we'll also develop our love and attachment for Krishna. So that, you know, that, <laughs> that's more subtle, developing the love and attach, attachment to Krishna. Faith and knowledge, okay, but love is something very deep. Developing that mood to love Krishna. So, coming to these higher levels. Maharaji can read. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Tanavat Pranam. As one advances in devotional activities, the process becomes progressively clearer and more encouraging. Unless one gets the spiritual encouragement by following the instructions of the spiritual master, it is not possible to make advancement. Therefore, one's development of a taste for executing these instructions is a test of one's devotional service. Initially, one must develop confidence by hearing the signs of devotion from a qualified spiritual master. Then, as he associates with devotees and tries to adopt the means instructed by the spiritual master in his own life, his misgivings and other obstacles are vanquished by his execution of devotional service. Chaitanya Chaitamrita Adilira 1.68. Thank you, Maharaji. So you can see Prabhupada is outlining the process of devotional service. Hmm? The development of taste for executing the instructions is the test of one's devotional service. We have to develop that taste for following the instructions. And then Prabhupada talks about initially develop confidence or <coughs> confidence, excuse me, uh, one must develop confidence by, by hearing. So confidence, um, we say Ado Shraddha Chata Sadhu Sangha, Bhajana Kriya. Sadhu Sangha, he associates with devotees. So he, he developed some Shraddha, then association with devotees, Sadhu Sangha. And the means instructed, that's Bhajana Kriya. And by Bhajana Kriya, then this is misgivings, other obstacles are vanquished. So, Anartha Navriti. 
You can see the first four stages are all being described here. Prabhupada is describing the result of following the instructions. So, what is the most essential order, Guru's most essential order? Smartavyam satatam vishnor vishmartavya najatu krit sarve vidi nishidashur etayoreva kinkara. Right? Famous verse from Padma Purana. Krishna is the origin of Lord Vishnu. He should always be remembered and never forgotten at any time. All the rules and prohibitions mentioned in the Shastra should be the servants of these two principles. What, what two principles? Always be remembered and never forget Krishna. Thank you. Yes. It's the most, these are the important principles, right? We, we, can't, we can't get away from these principles. We can change details, but not this principle. Very important. And so everything else, all the rules and regulations in the scriptures, they should be the servants. They're meant to serve these two principles. They're meant to help us to remember Krishna. When we to go on Sankirtan, to worship the deity, to all these different things, it's all to help us to remember Krishna and never forget him. Someone please read this one. Hare Krishna Maharaj. There are many regulative principles in the Shastra and directions given by the Guru. These regulative principles should act as servants of the basic principle. That is, one should always remember Krishna and no, never forget him. This chanting of 16 rounds is absolutely necessary if one wants to remember Krishna and not forget him. Of all the regulative principles, the spiritual master's order to chant at least 16 rounds is most essential. Chaitanya Charita Amrit Madhya Lila 22.113 Verse and Purpose. Hare Krishna. So you notice on the top here, we put Guru's most essential order, 16 rounds. And of course, these colors, this highlighting, this is done by us. This is not in the text, but I uh, want you to understand, it's certainly stated there, the chanting of 16 rounds is absolutely necessary if one wants to remember Krishna and not forget him. And we said this is the principle, this is the basic principle, or the most important principle. So we can't min minimize this. And Prabhupada was very, he, I, he told one devotee, the devotee said, Prabhupada, I don't have time to chant my rounds, I'm so busy. Prabhupada said, how many hours do you sleep? And the devotee said, well, six hours, Prabhupada, sometimes not even six hours. So Prabhupada told him, then sleep less, but you have to chant. You have to chant 16 rounds. I said, Prabhupada said, I don't care how many hours you sleep, but you have to, you have to chant 16 rounds. So if you're, you're not chanting 16 rounds, you're neglecting the order of the spiritual master. There were some people, one time Prabhupada was in Hawaii and there were these young men, very nice young men, they were taking a, a strong interest in Krishna consciousness and they wanted to get initiation. But the problem was, they said, we're very busy. We do a lot of things for training, the, you know, teaching tennis, for tennis coaches. And we have to train a lot, we have to run a lot and things like that to keep fit. And we cannot chant 16 rounds, but we can chant 12 rounds. So can we get initiation? And Prabhupada said, no. He said, first you chant 16 rounds, then you can get initiation. I'm not giving initiation to anybody who's not chanting 16 rounds. 
So this was a principle which Prabhupada kept. He didn't minimize it in any situation. There was one famous devotee. There was a devotee called, uh, oh, what was his name now? Oh, I forget his name. Anyway, he was a very, very humble soul and he worked in the kitchen in Vrindavan. And he did cooking all day. He cooked every offering in the kitchen in Vrindavan. He was, when he was uh, right up till his old age, until he could hardly walk, he was cooking every offering. And Prabhupada told him that he could chant his rounds as he cooked. It was a very special situation. We don't, we never saw Prabhupada do that with anybody else. But he still told him you have to chant 16 rounds, but you can do it in the kitchen. Okay, we'll go ahead. Someone like to read this? Hare Krishna Maharaj, everyone began his devotional life from the neophyte stage. But if one properly finished the chanting, the prescribed number of the round of Hari, Hari Nama, he is elevated step by step to the highest platform, Uttama Adhikari. Nectar of Instruction, text 5, forward, page 53. Thank you, Prabhu. So we can see from this, Prabhupada is saying, just by chanting 16 rounds every day, you will gradually become Uttama Adhikari. You can step by step, you come to the, that top stage. Go ahead, Prabhu, read this one also. When fully engaged in a chanting, the Hare Krishna Mahamantra is gradually realize his own spiritual identity. Unless one faithfully chants the Hare Krishna Mahamantra, Krishna does not reveal himself. <laughs> Nectar of instruction takes point. Mm. Fully engage in chanting the Mahamantra, we can realize our own spiritual identity. Right? You want to know you want to know who you are in the spiritual world? So simply chant Hare Krishna mantra. Krishna will reveal it to you gradually. Unless we faithfully chant, Krishna does not reveal himself. Okay, so some quotations here from Bhakti Sandarbha. Any volunteers to read this? Eka Krishna Name Kare Sarva Papakshaya Nava Vida Bhakti Purna Nama Haite Haya Simply by a senselessly chanting the holy name of Krishna once, a person is relieved from all the reactions of a sinful life. One can complete the nine process of devotional service simply by chanting the holy name. But, but out of the nine processes of devotional service, Kirtana is very important. The other processes should be executed, but they must be preceded and followed by Kirtana. Bhakti, uh, Bhakti Sandarubha 173, Chaitanya Chaitamata, Margalila 15.17. Thank you. <laughs> so the power of the holy name, Sometimes people have difficulty to understand how the holy name, simply by one, one chanting of the holy name, you can get freed from the reactions of sinful life. Of course, that means pure chanting, it's put there offenselessly chanting. So the power of the holy name was affected by the quality of the chanting. So if one ch chants the, the Shuddha Nam, then one gets the full benefit of the holy name and one can be freed from all sinful reactions. And then it's also pointed out that kirtan is very important. Other process should be executed, preceded and followed by kirtan. And we have kirtan in the beginning, we have kirtan during the arti, we have kirtan at the end. 
like that. Very important. Let people hear the holy name. All right. Maharaji, can you read this one also? Yes, Maharaj. Tara Madhya Sarva Shreshta Nama Samkirtana Nira Parade Nama Laile Paya Premadhana. Of the nine processes of devotional service, the most important is to always chant the holy name of the Lord. If one does so, avoiding the ten kinds of offenses, one very easily obtains the most valuable love of Godhead. Chaitanya Charitamrita Anjali Lila 471. So nine processes of devotional service, the most important is the chanting of the holy name. Because when the holy name is chanted correctly, then within the chanting of the holy name, there will be also hearing and there will be also remembering. So it's all the, oh, of course we heard previously they were saying the other processes, out of the nine processes of devotional service, the other processes should be executed. Oh, oh, oh one, can, one can complete the nine processes of devotional service simply by chanting the holy name. So not just even three, now we're hearing all nine processes are there in chanting of the holy name. But it has to be pure chanting, to come to the state of pure chanting, right? There are three stages in chanting the holy name. There is the Nam Aparad, offensive chanting. Then there's the Nam Abbas, the shadow of the name. And then there is Shuddha Nam, the pure name. So to get the maximum benefit, we have to come to the state of Shuddha Nam. If you get to the stage of Nam Abbas, Haridas Thakur said then that is liberated. That you can get liberation from that. But to get love of God, you have to come to the Shuddha now. You want to develop love for God. Don't just want liberation, do you? You want love of God. So to get love of God, we have to want the Shuddha now. What's the difference between Shuddha now and Namabhas? Anyone know how, how to describe Namabhas? Namabhas means chanting, uh, lessening little offenses. Yes. And here, with offenselessly chanting, the holy name is a, a pure stage, Sudhana. Okay. I, I, I would think the Namabhas is where you're, you're not deliberately committing any offense and you're trying to avoid committing offenses. You, you, you want to be careful to try to avoid committing offences. You're trying to chant the pure holy name. You may not have achieved it yet, but you're trying. You definitely don't want to commit any offences. So, and what's the most common offence in chanting the holy name? Thinking of something else. Yes, inattention, right? Inattention. inattention. So we have to learn to control the mind. All right, go ahead. Fulfilling the Guru's most essential order, 16 rounds. Please explain the analogy of nations compared to the disease called jaundice. Do we have a Prabhu who can explain this? Yes, Prabhu. Maharaj, in the jaundice, at the beginning, we don't have any taste for the uh, any uh, food. As long as the, we take the like uh, the, um, <coughs> juice, the sugar cane juice, so slowly we'll develop the taste for the uh, juice. At the beginning, it becomes a bitter. Later on, it becomes a sweeter. Same, <coughs> similarly, the chanting of the holy name it becomes very uh, bitter at the beginning, but at the later stage, it becomes sweeter. That's a uh, comparison between the disease of jaundice and... 
chanting of the holy name. Okay, Prabhu. Are you developing taste for the name? So far, no, Maharaj. Really? Oh, that's not good. You have to do more chanting. But I'm still chanting. Yes, you're still chanting. You still got jaundice, huh? <laughs> so, what's the remedy? Keep on chanting, Maharaj. Yes, more chanting. More chanting. Yeah. Who would like to read the verse? Prabhu? Any Prabhu can read that? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes, Prabhu. Yad Krishna Nama Charitati Sita Piya Vidya Pito Patai Pito Patapta Rasanasya Na Rochika Rochikano Kintwa Kintwa Darada Anudirama Alu Saiva Jasta Swadvi Ramada Bhavati Tar Gadamulahantri. Ah, yes. Translation. Uh, the holy name, character, pastimes, and activities of Krishna are all transcendentally sweet, like sugar candy. Although the tongue of one afflicted by the jaundice of avidya, ignorance, cannot taste anything sweet, it is wonderful that simply by carefully chanting these sweet names every day, a natural relish awakens within his tongue and his disease is gradually destroyed at the root. Nectar of Instruction, text 7, page 66. So note, <laughs> we've highlighted for your convenience, carefully chanting these sweet names every day, and then the result, the result is a natural relish will come. If we're not getting that natural relish, we haven't chanted. We, we have to. We have to make sure we're not chanting with offence. We may be chanting without proper attention. We're not giving the proper mood, the proper care in the chanting. So important to develop the taste for the holy name. Right. Would you like to read this also, Prabhu? Hare Krishna. If one chants the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra offenselessly, carefully, avoiding the ten offenses, he can certainly be gradually elevated to the point of understanding that there is no difference between the holy name of the Lord and the Lord Himself. One should know for certain that Without chanting the holy name of the Lord offenselessly, one cannot be a proper candidate for the advancement in Krishna consciousness. Nectar of Instruction, Text 5, Purport, page 53. Thank Hare you. Krishna. So, no difference between the name of the Lord and the Lord Himself. So, we should understand the holy name of the Lord, not different from the Lord. This that, so we have to be very respectful when we chant the holy name. That's very important for us to, to make advancement. Proper respect, understanding the name, not different. So how can we chant offenselessly? By hearing uh, what, what each and every word what we are uh, of the sixteen words mantra, whatever we say. We have to hear it clearly. Okay, that might help, yeah? We're going to look. What does Bhaktivinoda Thakur say? The holy name, like the sun, dispels the darkness of illusion. However, sometimes clouds of mist cover the sun from the viewer so that only a portion of the light comes through. In the same way, when ignorance and anarthas predominate, the sun of the holy name becomes covered and only a portion of the full effect of the name is felt. Harinama Chintamani. Alright, so what's Bhaktivinoda Thakur saying here? What's the problem? Like 
it's like a holy name is like a sun which dispels the darkness of illusion yes but why but why is it we're not tasting the nectar of the holy name because of the clouds uh, which are covering the sun and what are these clouds the anarthas within us yes the ignorance and the anarthas because the ignorance and anarthas predominate so we're not tasting the nectar the full effect of the holy name and these anarthas we're going to look and see now oh, someone else like to read another prabhu hare krishna Sir, hare krishna when the serious student takes shelter of a bona fide guru by force of his effective spiritual practices he can remove the obstructions blocking the sun of the holy name when the clouds and mist go away the brilliant sun of the name becomes visible and bestows upon the devotee the treasure of love of god hari naam chintamani hari krishna no so this is the goal to get love of god so how to do that God mentions we have to be serious <laughs> take shelter of a guru and then by his effect by his instructions he can help us his effective spiritual practices can help to remove the obstructions the anarthas the ignorance help us to come to the goal right <laughs> remember this we had this and when way back in text number 2 and 3 we were showing this diagram on the bottom yes naraj the six urges and the result when the six urges are uncontrolled then six unfavorable activities and attitudes take place and that brings us under the bahya shakti or the modes of passion and ignorance but if you go up the diagram when you get the the, the seed of devotion the guru krishna prasadi pai bhakti lata beej then you start practicing krishna consciousness and favorable attitude and get rid of the unfavorable attitudes and the urges are controlled then we come under the antaranga shakti the mode of goodness we, be, we become mahatmas instead of duranmas we become mahat So this is very nice this is what we want we want everyone to become mahatmas we don't want duratmas we don't need duratmas in krishna consciousness we need mahatmas very good okay rupa goswami's instruction marriage you can read Man must promote himself to the platform of goodness, Sattva Guna, by following the instructions of Rupa Goswami, and then everything concerning how to make future progress will be revealed. Nectar of Instruction, Preface, Page Eight. So then, coming back to the preface, Prabhupada was speaking about the importance of the mode of goodness. Sattva Gun, follow Rupa Goswami's instructions, and then everything will be revealed. Okay, so here's some advice from Shiva Ram Swami. Prabhu can read. Hare Krishna Maharaj. To increase the quality of the chanting devotee must try vigorously to free themselves from the four roots of root causes of unwanted habits offenses material desires weakness of heart and ignorance of spiritual truth 
those who fail to make such efforts miss the opportunity to gain the holy name holy name's mercy without which no one can surmount the obstacle of obstacle to krishna consciousness shivaram swami uh, okay so he's identified for us the four causes of offenses the four the four problems the anart which cause the anartas where do these anartas come from he said first of all first thing is offenses these offenses can be different forms things like if you do deity worship make some offenses or dealing with devotees vaishnava parad or chanting in the holy name nama parad these are their different offenses sit dama parad living in the holy place commit offense these different offenses are there you have to be careful then material desires that's also an, an, an anartha to keep a lot of material desires things so many things we want material life how will we ever get pure chanting if we keep all these material desires and then the weakness of heart weakness of heart <laughs> we don't want to give up these material desires we want to hold on to them weakness of heart attachment to so many silly things and then ignorance of spiritual truth we don't understand we're not fully convinced about the importance of the holy name or the process of bhakti yoga so these four different causes are there causing the anarthas and stopping us from getting the pure the full chanting the full benefit of the holy name this is from banu swami banu swami also a scholarly devotee He's written in many books he's translated many books and translated also uh, this hari nam chintamani and He's done a lot of translation work. Someone can read, Manaji. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Bhakti itself is kleshagri and produces anartha nimritti. Perseverance in bhakti, along with avoiding the unfavorable and following the favorable one to three verses, will effectively destroy anartha. Mm -hmm. Email from. Hello, Swami Maharaj, January 4, 2011. Hare Krishna. So Bhakti, he says, is Kleshagni. Kleshagni destroys all the f distress. It produces Anartha Nivriti. Destroys the Anarthas and it destroys all the distress. So perseverance along with avoiding the unfavorable and following the favorable as we showed in the diagram remember the unfavorable the atyahara prayashas prajapo these things over collecting overeating over endeavoring these things and following the favorable enthusiasm confidence patience so this will destroy the anarthas. It's giving us instruction based on this nectar of instruction. How to get rid of anarthas if we follow the teaching. Yes? Maharaji, can you read also Shiva Swami? Yeah, Hare Krishna. Transcendental knowledge acquired by studying Shastra and hearing from advanced devotees overcomes Ignorance of spiritual truth. Shivarama Swami Maharaj, Shuddha Bhagavata, Bhakti, Chintamani, Spaikati. So, ignorance of spiritual truth, that was one of the anarthas which Shivaram Swami identified. And how to remove it? Simply by studying Shastra and hearing from the devotees. It's very important for us regularly to hear 
and to study regularly, hearing, helps us to get rid, to avoid these anathas, to improve the quality of our chanting. So here we have a table, diagram, <laughs> stages of eradication of anathas, taken from Madhurya Kadambini, a book by Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, describing about different stages in chanting the holy name. You can see in the table on the left, you've got the stages, and then you've got bhakti, and then you've got sin and pious, and then we've got nama parad. So offensive chanting, and then someone's like nama bas, sinful pious in between, and then you've got bhak, the bhakta, the devotee. And you can see the effect, the effects of the removal of the anartas, to remove the anartas. So, in this diagram, the bottom, anartha nivriti, and then above anartha nivriti, nishta, and then ruchi, then asakti, then baba, then prema, and above prema, the Lord's lotus feet. So, coming up the table, you're coming to different higher stages of Krishna consciousness. Hare, Hare uh, sorry Maharaj, what is the difference in complete and absolute? Well, that's talking about the removal of the anartas. Absolute means the com they've gone forever. <laughs> and complete means you've removed them, but they might come back. <laughs> but absolute means they've fully, fully got rid of them, completely got rid of them. This is how he's described it in the Madhurya Kadambini. It's a small book, a small pamphlet actually, not, not very big, just describing about different stages of devotional service. And he talks about these removing the anathas. So the, I, the point is, uh, if, you, if you can get up to the stage of ruchi, then you, the, if, you're, if you're chanting the pure name, then you're going to get at the stage of ruchi. There's no question of an artist, absolutely removed, complete. But if on the, left, on, the right, on the right side, you've got the nama parada, nama parada chanting. And so the stage of nista, there's still pervasive, it's still, there's still offences there, there's still anarchists there. Not, an, the anarchists are still going to be there. But, as the, if he comes up to the level of bhava, then almost complete. Well, you can look at that, uh, you know, it's in the, the over, I said the, the over, view of you, to you, so you have it, you can look over it. It's not so important for us, but he, he mentions like this, different stages of removal of the anartas. You want to understand how it works, it, that, you know, there's stages to it. But we're seeing the advice, we've been giving you advice, like Shivaram said, Shivaram Maharaj says, study Shastra and hear from advanced devotees. And Banu Swami said, follow the first three verses of the Upadesha Amrita, that will also remove anartas. These things. This is the medicine, right? We know what the disease is, we've got the medicine. All right, Prabhu can read. Krishna Maharaj, Kamata may means madness, but here the meaning is inattention or carelessness. 
it is from his, this offense that all other offenses springs yes arinam chintamani so we were talking earlier Maharaji mentioned also inattention the mind wanders inattention carelessness from this offense all the other offenses spring from this one of inattention is the cause of all these other offenses Banuswami, what did he say about it? Keep reading, Prabhu. Controlling the senses, avoiding the bad association, and taking good association, first four verses of nectar of instruction, is essential for being in a, attentive, being attentive. Yeah. You're going to be attentive. You want to be attentive, want to keep my control of mind. We have to be careful about association. You get too much bad association, they just deviate you from chanting the holy name. So much prajapa and nonsense talk. Keep reading, Prabhu. Harinama Chintamani has further divided this inattentiveness in three ways apathy, inactivity, and distraction are the three types of inattentiveness. Unless one gets Free from these three types of inattentiveness, one cannot perform devotional service at all. Even if one give, give up all other nama pradas, if he is still inattentive, he can. Maharaj? Yeah, go ahead. Next. He can never have attraction for the holy names. If one has enthusiasm in the beginning of the devotional service and that enthusiasm does not become cold, then one can one will never become apathetic, lazy or distracted in the chanting of holy names. Silam mm Bhakti -hmm. Vino. Bhaktiya Loka. Bhaktiya Loka, chapter seven. All right, so Bhaktivinoda Thakur has identified three different kinds of or different things which cause us to be inattentive. He's given uh, apathy, apathy meaning you could not care, you don't think it's important. That's the problem. Ap apathetic. People are apathetic. They're, they have this apathy to chanting. They think, oh, it doesn't matter. Oh, it's not important. Oh, yeah, we do it. We do it, but it's not, you know, it's not so, but nothing, nothing to think about. That's apathy. And then inactivity. <laughs> they don't do it. They don't do chanting. They just lay. And distraction, they're looking at their handphones all the time, talking, a bit, a bit chanting, a bit talking, a bit chanting, a bit talking, this kind of distraction. So three types of inattention. And from these three types, you get other offenses coming. Just simply causes us to be to lose our enthusiasm. He mentions, he mentions here you don't, if in the beginning if you're enthusiastic you want to keep that enthusiasm. That's a difficulty. People come sometimes at the beginning very enthusiastic but then they lose their enthusiasm. So we have to keep them enthusiastic. Why do they lose their enthusiasm? Because of these kind of offences, they become apathetic, distracted, lazy in chanting the holy name. They think, oh, chanting is not very important. It's the most important, very important. So how to chant? Prabhupada told us here, there's a nice quote here, the chanting is exactly like genuine crying by the child for his mother. Srila Prabhupada, Hare Krishna Maha Mantra address. So the chanting like a genuine crying by the child. Those of you who have got children, 
You know how your child cries for you. So when we chant the holy name, our chanting should be like that, that we're calling to Krishna. Krishna is our mother. He's our father. He's also our mother. Right? We're all maintained by Krishna. We're all, uh, we've all come from the womb of Krishna into this world. So Krishna is like our mother and we should cry for him. Our chanting is, should be like the baby crying for the mother. Hare Krishna, O oh my Lord, O oh energy of the Lord, please engage me in your service. Teachings of Lord Chaitanya, Chapter 18, The Conversation with Prakashananda, hmm. 21st paragraph. <laughs> so Prabhupada is describing the meaning of the mantra, O oh my Lord, Krishna, Rama, O oh energy of the Lord, Hari, please engage me in your service. This, so Maha Mantra is a prayer and it's also the answer to the prayer. It's very special prayer because it's also the answer to the prayer. Because we're praying to Krishna, please engage me in your service. And by chanting the holy name, we're, our prayer is being answered because Krishna is giving us service. The chanting of the holy name is service. So it's both a prayer for service and it is the answer to the prayer because it's a, giving us the opportunity to do service. All right, somebody like to read? Yes, Prabhu, go ahead. Prabhupada said, practice makes perfect even in spiritual life. So, the more we practice chanting, the more we become perfect in chanting. And he said of himself, prob probably to encourage us that it, it took him 30 years to be able to chant the way he, he was chanting when we met him. So, we should be uh, patient also but determined and enthusiastic. <laughs> Giri, Giriraja Swami. Hare Krishna. Oh. And so, Prabhupada was saying, don't think this is going to be so quick. It took him 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's so, you know, <laughs> oh, 30 years, oh, <laughs> long time. But, Still, we should be determined, enthusiastic, patient. It may take us 30 lifetimes. You don't know. We have to keep chanting, keep chanting. We don't know. We, we, we should never be satisfied. We should never think, oh, my chanting is very good. No, we should always want to improve and try to develop better chanting, better chanting. Mm -hmm. Yes, who would like to read? By devotional service only is one elevated to the transcendental planet Goloka Vrindavana and there also there is only devotional service. For the activities of de devotional service both in this world and in the spiritual world are one and the same. Devotional service does not change. The example of mango can be given here. If one gets an unripe mango, it is still a mango. And when it is ripe, it remains the same mango. But it has become more... Oh, what happened? Uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> has become more... <laughs> Where's my... Yeah. But it has become more? Oh. Oh. I missed a slide. Somehow we missed a slide here. That's a problem. Let me see. Hmm. 
There's some slice missing here. Sundar Pranam Maharaj, it is up to there only in your notes also. Hmm? In notes also it is up to there, up to more only, after that concluding quote. Really? Yes, Maharaj. Hmm. Okay, it's still a mango, but when it's ripe, it remains the same mango, but it has, but it has become more ripe, right? But there should be, a, there's, there's some slice missing, there should be some other quotes. Uh, oh, I didn't check this, I have to look. In the notes, that's all it said also? Does it have... Maybe. Mm. Yes. More sweet. Um, see if I. I'll try to see if I can get it from the other computer here. Sorry, just give me one more little few minutes. No, okay, that's all. The, yeah, it's the same there in that one also. I thought it might have been different. Anyway, example of the mango is given. Maharaj, Maharaj, Pranam. Yes? I could search it out. It is Nectar of Devotion, uh, verse 12. As the riper fruit has become more relishable when fruit touched by the beak of a parrot or shuka. Oh. So, Srimad Bhagavatam has become more relishable by being delivered to the transcendental mouth of Sukhdev Goswami. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, thank you. Okay, so the mango example. So we have the mango in the form of our seed of devotion, but it has to become ripe. Right? The idea is that the mango, as if you keep the mango, it will become ripe. And so the same way our devotional service is like, it's, it's, it's kacha, it's not yet paka. 
and devotional service in this world and in the spiritual world are one and the same. <laughs> so we're doing our devotional service here in this world and we're preparing to go to the spiritual world. And to, but to go to the spiritual world, we have to become like the ripe mango. That's the idea. So we have to prepare ourselves for that. Okay, so here's the concluding quote to finish this off. Yasya deve para bhaktir yata deve tataguro tashaiti katitahi arta prakashanti mahatmana svitas vatara upanishad. Those great souls who have faith in both the Lord and the spiritual master, all the imports of Vedic knowledge are automatically revealed. I would often ask, who do you have more faith in, Guru or Krishna? You have faith in the Lord or you have more faith in Guru? Right? So some of you may say faith in the Lord and some may say faith in the Guru. But the proper answer is both, because the Guru is the representative of the Lord. And the spiritual master is the representative of Krishna. So we have to have equal faith in both the Lord and in the spiritual master. And then all the imports are revealed. Then everything can be understood. Right? This is Srila Prabhupada's instruction to us. All right, so that's that verse. Let's look at the questions which are over here. Just make sure we're up to date with all of this. Okay, lesson number six. What is the meaning of Nityananda Vamsha? We did not discuss that yet. Have you heard of the Nityananda Vamsas? The Nityananda Vamsas means that they claim to be the descendants of Lord Nityananda. Now, Lord Nityananda did marry. He had two wives, he married two sisters, and he had one son and one daughter, both by the one wife, both by uh, Vash Vash Vashuni. Not by Janava, by the other, by the other sister, Vasu, Vasuri. So the Nityananda Vamsas, they claim they are descendants of Lord Nityananda. But actually, after Lord Nityananda, he had one son, Virabhadra. Virabhadra was a brahmachari. He never married. So there was no issue after that. So nobody is actually the direct descendant of Lord Nityananda. But these people claim, because they're from the village. <laughs> they're from the, they come from the same village as Lord Nityananda, or some were in, engaged in his service, some were his followers, maybe disciples and like that, pujaris and things and cooks. And so they, came, they claim they're the descendants of Lord Nityananda. So they claim by birthright they're the Acharya, because of their relationship with Lord Nityananda, they claim that they are the actual acharyas for spreading Krishna consciousness. So Prabhupada said, yeah, they have a right to preach. We don't deny them the right to preach, but they shouldn't think that they are the absolute acharya with supreme position over everybody. Let them do something. They didn't do anything. They, mainly they're in Vrindavan, or Nabid, then they don't go much, they don't go around traveling, preaching, they do a little, but they don't do much propaganda work. So this is the Nityananda Bamsas. They claim to be the descendants of Lord Nityananda, and they claim because of that relationship, they're the Acharyas. So Prabhupada said that position of Acharya is not given by birth. It's not a question of birth. And then, second question, spiritual master must not be subjected to the advice from whom? Do you remember that? From a disciple. 
Yeah. Right, that's right. Yes, good. Okay, then text number seven. The meaning Javesvarupahai Nitya Krishna Das. That's not difficult. Right? That by our constitutional position is to be the eternal servant of Krishna. Define Durashaya. Anybody know that? Define Durashaya? False or bad association marriage. Durashaya, false <laughs> or bad association. A false shelter, yeah. Not proper shelter, bad association. Okay. And then three stages of chanting the holy name. Namo Burang, Namo Bash, and Shuddhana. Yes. At what stage can Maya not catch a, a devotee? Wow. At Bhava, yes. If you come to the stage of Bhava, then you won't fall down. Supposed to be anyway. Jad Bharat, Ma, Bharat Maharaj got a problem, but you know, anyway, generally, you get to Baba. If you have an association of devotees, Jad, Bharat Maharaj didn't have any association, so he got some problem. But if you have association with devotees, if you're up to the level of Baba, then it shouldn't be a problem. Okay? Let's just see about the objectives which we are supposed to cover here. Okay, we looked at text number 5 and 6. Uh, the appropriate attitude, uh, yes, the same appropriate attitude in seeing external features, we covered that. Describe the importance of ISKCON of applying the appropriate attitude towards external features. Yes, we did this. Present text number 7 to 11. Present the analogy of nations compared to the disease called jaundice. We did that. Explain the progressive stages of hearing and Krishna Smaranam. We didn't do that. That's text number 8. We're not up there yet. Text number eight, no, we're not doing, we haven't done eight or nine, we'll do eight tomorrow. We have two more classes. I think we can finish everything in two more classes. Nine, ten and eleven, we'll do the, we'll do it on Friday. And we'll do eight tomorrow. But we'll finish seven. Five, six, and seven we've covered. Are there any questions? Is everybody writing your essay? Yes, the So ultimately, what would the answer? So the Nityananda Vamsa means they the, they claim to be descendants of Lord Nityananda. They claim to be the descendants of Lord Nityananda and they claim to be the representatives of Lord Nityananda and they, so they say we are the Acharya. But is it authenticated? No. But Goswami are not from the descendants of Lord Nityananda, isn't it? The Goswamis? No. They are more into Lord Chaitanya. Huh? They are more into with Lord Chaitanya. No, well, they also know Lord Nityananda. They would meet Lord Nityananda. The Goswamis. Of course, Goswamis of Vrindavan. Lord Nityananda, he was preaching in Bengal. So they would readily see Lord Nityananda. Maybe if he came for Ratiyatra. Maybe somebody would be there from Vrindavan, they'd gone to Puri to meet Lord Chaitanya and maybe Lord Nityananda would come there at that time. Uh, but Maurice here, last Friday we had a class from uh, 
एकचक्र धाम विच इज ओरिजिनल बर्थ प्लेस ऑफ लॉर्ड नित्यानंद दैट प्रभु ही हैज नॉट मेंशन एनीथिंग लाइक फ्रॉम हिज डिसेंडेंट एनीथिंग हैज कम बिकॉज़ इट्स नॉट वेरी इंपोर्टेंट I told you there's no direct descendant of Lord Nityananda there is no direct descendant these people claim they are the, they are the actual descendants but they're not because Virabhadra was the only son and Virabhadra was a brahmachari yeah and so there's no direct descendant after the one son but they claim they are because they're from the same village because they you know they were with him just like the goswamis in vrindavan you know they take the title goswami because they were they were serving the goswami they've taken the name goswami for themselves but you know they're not actually they're not sanyasis they just took the name goswami because they were serving another goswami someone who was a goswami You know, like there were pujaris in the temple or something. So they take the name, like that. Okay, thank you, Maharaj. Nityananda Vamsas is also mentioned in the Nectar of Devotion, and Prabhupada talks about how Bhakti Sadanta Sarasati he had to preach strongly against them. because they were objecting to bhakti siddhanta saraswati's preaching so bhakti siddhanta saraswati he exposed the, you know that the, you people are not actually descendants of lord nichananda you but you can preach no harm you do your preaching very good we encourage them to preach we want everybody to preach we need more preaching that's very nice but you know it doesn't mean you're the acharya it doesn't mean you're controlling everybody and you have a say over everybody they don't they don't make a lot of propaganda you know they don't do much they haven't built any really big temples Bahar is in the Hatugara, that the place which is Lord Nitanda has disappeared from there. Huh? What about that? No, I'm saying that the original birthplace, which is Akachakra Dam of Lord Nitanda, there is a place called Hatugara. What I heard, I'm not sure. What I heard, like more Lord has disappeared from there, in that place. But we understand Lord Nitanda when he entered into the deity. Yeah. He entered into the deity, the Siddhi there in Eka Chakra, which was established by Lord Nichananda, and Lord Nichananda entered into the deity. And that which is the temple, which is uh, in the pond, which is only can the top portion can be seen. Oh, really? I don't know. No, no, it's uh, there in Eka Chakra Dam. It means in that village, whole area, whole vicinity. Well, I've been to Ekajakra Dam several times. I've never seen this. Um, uh, Maharaj, I can. I have a photo exactly. Um, I'm sorry, Maharaj. I'm trying to because I was not very clear. That's why when Nitanda uh, to whose topics comes, so I'm trying to uh, understand that. Mm. Okay. Uh, any other questions? No, nothing else. All right. So we'll meet on we'll meet on Wednesday night. We'll continue. So thank you very much, Shri Prabhupad Ki. Okay. Go back to. Go back to Vrinda Ki. Hari Krishna.